Well, as different reactions continue to trail the decision of members of the House of Representatives to slash their salaries by 50 percent, uh, given the hardship in Nigeria, a former vice president of Nigeria, Atiku Abu Bakr, has commended the legislators for their sacrifice. In a statement on his ex-account, Atiku described the gesture as a mere drop in the ocean of Nigeria's fiscal challenges. He stressed that the core issue is with the allowances of lawmakers and government officials, not their salaries. While Representative Akin Rotomi is a spokesman of the House of Representatives, he joins me now to look at the step taken by the Green Chambers, which has uh, been welcomed by Nigerians with uh, mixed uh, feelings. Uh, good to see you and thanks for your time. Well, I think the right place to start much. was to toe the line of the former Vice President by saying thank you on behalf of Nigerians, even though they say it's still not enough. Now, let's start by talking about how you arrived at this decision. Uh, that's a better place uh, for us uh, because it's already uh, uh, not more news that you understand that Nigerians are going through a hard time, unprecedented mm -hmm. that is. So how did you arrive at convincing every one of you to get to this 50% slash in your salaries? Uh, thank you very much, Alide, and um, good evening, Nigerians. Um, as you know, the 10th Assembly House of Representatives, uh, for the first time in the Fourth Republic, has eight political parties uh, represented. So you understand the diversity, you understand how robust our conversations and debates uh, on the floor can be. Um, and it is uh, to the credit of Right Honorable Abbas Tajuddin, the presiding officer the speaker, uh, who was presiding on that day on during plenary, um, that he was able to um, you know, preside over a conversation uh, that had input from members across the aisle. And uh, the broad resolutions that we had, you know, was number one, to empathize with Nigerians on what it is that, uh, you know, is going on currently. We understand that these are very difficult, um, you know, a period for Nigerians following um, very difficult but necessary um, you know, decisions that were taken by the executive arm of government. So we understand and empathize. I don't think we, we can speak enough about how much we as members of the House of Representatives feel the pulse of Nigerians. We are the ones that have to bear the brunt of all the, um, you know, pressure from our constituents, you know, because of what it is that they are going through. So we empathize with them. And that was broad across the aisle, even, you know, from, you know, members of the ruling party. It was unequivocal that we know that Nigerians are going through a lot at this time. And then further to that, we also um, acknowledge the fact that Nigerians have a right to dissent. Nigerians have a right to protest. Nigerians have a right to demand from their government, uh, you know, and ask questions, you know, where necessary. However, we decided, you know, through the collective wisdom of the House, like I said, it was a multi-partisan you know, consensus from all members across all parties, including the seven opposition parties, including the party of um, His Excellency Atiku Abubakar, that um, we, you know, we were going to call on Nigerians to reconsider uh, having street-level protests because of the experiences that we've had in, in the past uh, and to engage government. We also um, agreed and resolved that um, the Ministry of um, Budget and Economic Planning need to engage Nigerians. Nigerians asked questions. The reasons Nigerians would resort to the streets is because they feel that they are, their questions have not been answered. Well, we'll so, come back to the issue of yes. streets. Uh, I hate to cut you here because now let, let's talk about how... how no, maybe you just let me talk about the resolutions. So we, we, we also resolve that it's important the executive should engage Nigerians and answer the questions that they've posed. And then the third resolution was that, you know, you can say symbolic, but also to, you know, uh, show our solidarity with Nigerians and to make Nigerians understand that we feel their plight and um, we are very much aligned with the fact that there should be um, cuts in the cost of governance across the board. Well, we really do yes. not have the time. Let me come in here now. And it, it has to do with what you've been able to get from your members and yes, sometimes uh, it's not enough to say you're getting this X amount for the people. It has always been a problem in Nigeria mm -hmm. for, uh, uh, about disbursement, mm -hmm. uh, how you identify or how you intend to help 
ensure that this is plowed into the system. Yes. Did this conversation, or is this a conversation that you're having? Because by the time you're getting this out and you say you're plowing this into uh, the purse of the Federation, mm -hmm. how best do you think that will get to the people, ultimately, uh, those who need it? Well, I'll remind you of the time when we had issues around rice and all of that, and people holding people, you know, honorable members to account, even though they had wrong perceptions about it. But the point here is that the um, members of the House of Representatives, legis legislators, are the ones closest to the people. We are the ones, if you want me to get anything to my constituents by tomorrow morning, we have, you know, the structures to be able to deliver that. So it's not even a problem at all for us to, 108 million or thereabout, uh, every month, 648, we will decide what it is that we're going to do to be able to provide some reprieve to Nigerians. So it's not a problem for legislators that are on ground, that have constituency offices in 360 constituencies in the country, Perhaps, uh, to be able to uh, get to Nigerians. Uh, well, uh, uh, Rotimi, I'm sure maybe things have changed, because if you recall then during the NSAS riot, we yeah. saw some of what uh, is still a very sore point in our polity to this mm -hmm. uh, day, that people were actually warehousing those who should get to the people well, warehousing palliatives. But again, yes. let's talk about that uh, very worrisome issue which you also raised, uh, mm -hmm. how the government can engage the people and ensure yes. that no one, irrespective of your thinking on ideology, mm -hmm. get on the street. Well, it's um, a charge that we've put to Nigerians, um, you know, especially those that are proponents of the protest, that we should um, achieve change by other means and which is to engage with government, but we've put it to the executive arm of government as well, that, you know, we can't talk down on Nigerians. We can't, you know, we, we must protect dissent. We must protest, protect the rights of citizens to protest. However, we are appealing to Nigerians that this is not the time. Things are very fragile. Tempers are very flared. It is important that we engage. So we've put that challenge to the executive arm of government to you know, open channels of engagement to the Nigerian people, to be able to answer some of the questions, uh, to, to be able to understand better some of the reforms that are already happening, uh, to be able to make things uh, a lot better. So for us, um, you know, I, I believe strongly that um, Nigerians are well-meaning and they will accede to this request that street-level protests at this point in time is not, not what we need in, in, in the country. We will continue, Nigeria will continue to be a work in progress. We will continue to agitate. The, the, the 10th Assembly House of Representatives has proven to be different. We are an engaging with the People's House. No assembly has done as much as us in terms of, we only just concluded our open week last week where we engage Nigerians across board you know, to feel the pulse of Nigerians and to be able to answer their questions. We've had several sectoral debates on the issue of agriculture, on finance, on security. We continue to engage Nigerians because we believe that they have the right to hear from their leaders. Well, again, it takes us uh, to the other aspect, uh, which uh, the former vice president has also raised while commending the uh, assembly he's also saying well this is just a drop in the ocean mm -hmm. and he's uh, pointing fingers at what he calls allowances mm -hmm. now that you're here let's talk about allowances many mm -hmm. nigerians the vice president inclusive who is one of those uh, founding fathers of this present democracy mm -hmm. thinks uh, that uh, uh, the allowance of the legislators like yourself should be the real deal and not the uh, take home pay originally that so, uh, you have sacrificed, which is welcomed. Well, it's an opportunity to correct misconceptions. I'm sure that His Excellency Atiku Abubakar well knows that when you talk about allowances, I don't know what you're talking about allowances. Because that's, if a, you that's talk, it on the screen. He calls it, it's a drop in the ocean. If well, you, it's if a you drop in the ocean, but you must also understand that Nigerians are going through a whole lot and anything being done you know, to um, ameliorate, you know, what Nigerians are going through, I think goes a long way, and I don't think it's fair. We've dropped that, um, we've put a drop in the ocean, I am exactly <laughs> Alaji Atiko Bubaka can also put his own drop in the ocean. But back to the point about allowances, I don't know what we're talking about allowances. There are a lot of these misconceptions that go on. If you're talking about cost of running, you don't expect people to run offices at their own expense. If you have to retire funds and prove, if you don't do anything in the course of work, then there's nothing to retire. So I don't know, you know, this perception that has gone on for a long time about allowances. What allowances are we really talking about? What do you think uh, Nigerians are talking about? I think that people have this perception and it prevails of fake news disinformation that go out to intentionally cause disaffection for the legislature. 
that carry out this news. You saw someone the other day, um, you know, and I'll mention her name, Miss uh, Adiola Fayeun, that went and was reeling all sorts of figures about what it is that lawmakers and <laughs> and she had to, she had to, she had to who, who do you blame? Who do you blame? Because it was I'm because you're, you're the spokesperson. Yes. Till date. Yes. A lot of people still do not. It's foggy. It's the it's foggiest. Is the foggiest it's thing not. in our polity well, that those who represent us, we really don't know anything about uh, the no, table. No, it's not. And I've put, I've put the challenge to Nigerians. I've put the challenge to everyone. If you go to Ramfac's website, constitutionally, Ramfac is the one that is mandated to set the salaries and wages of public uh, sector officials. The, it is right there on the website what it is that. Uh, lawmakers end from the top, from the president to the vice president, senate president, speaker, members, senators. You see, so this. But, but now this, that you're here, yes, you, you, might you, might, 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 might you yes. want to help the people it's, and just it's, it's, give it's, us an idea? It's it, not an idea. It's in exactly. It's it's clear, right? It's not even up to six hundred thousand. It's 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 um um depending on. You know, some of the deductions, so for example, you know, we unfortunately lost a colleague um, and, you know, there's a resolution amongst us that whenever that happens, there are deductions that happen for us to be able to support, you know, the family and all of that. So many times we make those resolutions to be able to make deductions, so it fluctuates, but, you know, it's never really um, topped 600,000 there. So, you know, when you have those perceptions over time, again, um, and I agree with you that, you know, um, we need to move more in the direction of having conversations around this because I wish that we did have all those resources that people bandy around and talk about, you know, legislators' earnings and all of that. It's, 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 um, it's absolutely unfair for people, you know, working, you know, really hard, you know, on the, you know, you know in the grassroots. You, you can't imagine just how much of, um, um, you know, legislators go the extra mile to be able to support people on the grassroots because your number is there, everybody calls you and you, don't, you, only, you can only do just how much you can. You know, so you know, to have to go through all of that, it's such a, sometimes it can be really disheartening for people to have those perceptions that these people are just there trying to feed off um, you know, the commonwealth. It's, it's absolutely not true. And, yeah. I, and I challenge everyone, you know, again, this 10th assembly, we have made that resolve that this is where we're going to draw the line about issues around disinformation. We're going to be more, we had an open parliament last week, or uh, about two weeks ago, where we asked everybody to come in and be able to engage with us. We are opening our doors because Nigerians deserve, right, to, to have access to information about their public officials and to have, um, you know, um, access to us. That's why we, we readily engage on these issues. You mentioned you want to engage on this subject. We're not shy of having conversations around it. And I'd like to thank you for that, uh, for all this uh, obliging us. But again, uh, as we wind down, the, the pain, it will come mm. back to how we started, the pain Nigerians are going through. Uh, how much of a uh, kind of conversation is the uh, House having with the executive arm? Because it will seem uh, as if uh, all of the actions, mm. policies, actions of the government uh, haven't been felt by the people, your, your constituents. To be honest, again, I'm a member of the ruling party, but I speak for eight political parties. I speak for the 10th Assembly. Our, our consensus is that the executive needs to do a lot more and have a lot more urgency to implementing um, you know, all of the plans. We have no doubt about Mr. President's Renewed Hope Agenda. We have no doubt about it. Um, we have no doubt about the fact that he's taking difficult but necessary decisions. But we believe that there, there's uh, a lot more that can be done in terms of expediting uh, these issues. Because again, um, for, for those of us in 360 constituencies, you know, that feel the pain of Nigerians. And um, we can't even begin to talk about the mental exertion sometimes, having to deal with issues. If you, every morning you have, you know, calls, you have people sending pictures of people in the hospital, you have people sending pictures of, uh, you know, all sorts of things, and you can only try your best. So we feel these issues, and we believe that, aside of all the handouts and tokens and, um, you know, palliatives, as it were, you know, it's more important that the executive expedites action on fundamental, um, you know, corrections to the economy, so that, you know, Nigerians can, as Mr. President said, let the poor breathe. Well, that's a fine place for us to live. It is very important that we put a junior at the end of your name, right? 
Well, because my father was also Honorable Akin Rotini. I so wanted us to be very, very important. Anytime in official context, I like to be able to state that the Second Republic is different from the So let uh, me do that Republic. now. <laughs> Many thanks, uh, Representative Akin Rotimi Jr. for coming it's on. It's always Newsnet. a pleasure. Um, it's our obligation to engage with Nigerians. <laughs>